Well, before we go too much further then, let's take a look at some of these terms that we use in electronics. And a lot of the terms that we use in electronics are, are kind of weird because they're named after people. They're named after early pioneers in, in electronics and stuff like that. In fact, they're named after dead guys, basically. So, so let's learn some of these dead guy terms. And one of the first terms that we want to cover is the term voltage. Voltage is our electrical term for pressure. Our electrical measurement for pressure. Now, if I was talking about water, talking about water pressure, what's our, what's our unit of water pressure? Pounds per pressure. Yeah, PSI, pounds per square inch, right? Sure, PSI. Um, voltage, our unit is the volt. Voltage is measured in volts. One volt, two or more volts, pretty simple. Uh, in this case, uh, named after a guy named Alessandro Volta. Uh, he's an Italian guy, and he's the guy that invented the battery. Like hundreds of years ago, invented the chemical battery. Um, and so we measure, we measure voltage or pressure in volts. Uh, for instance, um, that six volt battery, this has, whoa, hey, oh, hey. Florence lights. That's it, Florence <laughs> lights. Have a nice trip. See you next fall. Okay, uh, this, is a, uh, this is a six volt battery. It has six volts of electrical pressure. And since this is a six volt lamp, uh, I'm all discombobulated now. Since this is a six volt lamp, it glows pretty normally because it's got a six volt battery attached to it. Uh, your car battery, on the other hand, is probably 12 volts. It has twice as much pressure. If I were to connect this 6-volt lamp to the 12-volt car battery, it would glow like really incredibly bright for a short time, and then it would burn out, obviously. Uh, so the, the higher the voltage is, the more pressure you have. The, uh, the uh, power from the AC wall receptacle down here is 120 volts. Yeah, cause. This is 120 volts coming out of the wall receptacle, 10 times what comes out of your car battery, 10 times the pressure. On the other hand, all of the games that we use, all of the integrated circuits, or almost every integrated circuit in every game you work on, requires 5 volts DC to operate. Most of you are probably familiar with this because your power supply has a 5 volt output, and, and uh, this is very critical. We'll talk more about this, we'll talk a lot about this, in fact, because this has to be very exact. The 5 volts DC can only vary plus or minus a quarter of a volt before we start to see problems. That's one of the reasons, in fact, it's almost the main reason, not really, though, uh, why you want to have a digital multimeter so that you can check it accurately, because that 5 volts really has to be accurate. We'll talk a lot about that as we go through the class. You can imagine what would happen if you ran 120 volts of pressure into the 5 volt logic board. I mean, the, the extra pressure literally blows the tops off of all the ICs on the board. It's really, you know how I know that? Because <laughs> it happened to me once. It was really a disaster. Uh, just, just bam, just craters all the chips. And, and uh, of course, that makes troubleshooting easy, doesn't it? You just replace everything and, and that's it. It's a terrible, horrible thing to have happen. In fact, we'll talk more about this. Um, there's a, there's um, a type of a transformer that you'll use in every game called an isolation transformer. It's a safety transformer. And without this isolation transformer, there's a possibility of putting 120 volts on your logic board. This is a, like a real common problem in Mexico, apparently. They go, well, I don't need no sinking transformer, and they don't put it on there and, and blow stuff up. So, so this thing is nothing more than a converter. Well, we'll talk about it in great detail coming up. Uh, it's an isolator. It isolates everything from the AC power line. We'll, I'll give you the straight poop as we go through this thing. I'm just trying to introduce you to some, some, some different terms now. So uh, one of the things that we use our meter for is to measure voltage. And it's, it's probably what most of you are, the only thing you're using your meter for right now is to check the 5 volt power supply maybe, um, or to see if you have AC power coming from the wall receptacle. But there's lots of other things that you can use the meter for as you'll see later on. So voltage measured in volts, that's one of the things that, we, that our meter will measure.
The next term is current. And current is defined as the flow of electricity. Just like current in a river is the flow of water in a river, so too the flow of electrons, or actually since we're talking about conventional current, let's just call it the flow of electricity, um, is called current. And our unit of current is the ampere, A-M-P-E-R-E. -E. Uh, it's another dead guy. In this case, the guy's name is Andre Ampere, one of your countrymen, Claude. Uh, and I don't, I, I don't really know what the hell he did, to be honest with you. He's some kind of electronic genius. I don't know. Um, but current is measured in amperes, but nobody says amperes. Everybody just says amps for short. Amps, A-M-P. One amp, two or more amps. Uh, if you say amperes, people look at you like you're, like you're really strange. So current is measured in amps. Uh, current is the flow of electricity in a circuit. How much actual flow is there in, in a circuit? Um, now, although the meter can measure amperes, we never actually or measure amps. We never actually have to do it when we're working on games. There's never any reason whatsoever, as far as diagnostic tool is concerned, for us to ever measure current when we're working on games. So uh, we never have to do it. In fact, the only time that I've ever even measured electric current in a game is uh, just out of curiosity to see how much electric current a game maybe draws from the, from the wall receptacle or <clears throat> how much electric current a logic board might draw from a power supply. Um, and by the way, uh, your average video game only draws about an amp and a half to two amps out of the AC power receptacle. This is especially important for those of you that work in arcades or are setting up arcades. How many games can you put on one circuit breaker? Well, if you have a 20 amp breaker, obviously, if you put 10 on there, you'll be fine, 10 or less. So, what do you, you guys have, like a mess of them loaded up on a circuit breaker or something in your place? No, um, we got two geared up with um, two 20s. Two twenties, two twenty amp yeah. breakers. Oh, okay. Not not two hundred twenty volts. <laughs> okay, <laughs> scare me there. Go two twenty. What? What are you doing? So, <laughs> okay. Fire sale. Yeah, fire sale. Yeah, really. Well, this happened to me a couple of times. I, I worked in England for about a year, and uh, when people would send us, when we get equipment like from the United States, uh, a lot of it came wired from 110. We had to be very, very careful that we didn't plug it right into the wall, blow it up. Anyway, so uh, voltage we will measure with our meter. Current we don't have to measure with the meter. And then there's one other term we want to look at, resistance. Resistance is defined as the opposition to the flow. The opposition to the flow of electric current. Now that's, ooh, 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 that's really complicated. Here's what I really mean by that, though. Imagine that I'm out in my backyard and I'm watering my garden out. I'm watering my petunias out there or something. And, and of course, the amount of water that comes out of the end of the hose is determined by the, you know, the, the, the spigot over here, the pressure at the spigot. You turn on the spigot, or the faucet or whatever you want to call it, and the, the water comes out. If someone comes along and kinks the hose, it's harder for the water to get through that kink, right? That's a resistance. That's slowing the water down. What happens to the amount of water coming out the end of the hose? It trickles. A lot less, right? So the more resistance you have, the less current you have flowing in a circuit. Uh, everything has a certain amount of resistance. Uh, you know, for instance, uh -oh. oh, come back over here. For instance, thank you. Uh, obviously, the filament in this lamp has a certain amount of resistance. It's harder for the electrons to get through the skinny little filament of the lamp than it is through the wires. So the lamp must have some resistance. Now the wires aren't glowing like this. The wires aren't glowing because they're thick enough that they can handle 
the amount of current that's going through them. But of course, if I tried to jump start my car with these little clip leads, they probably would look like that, wouldn't they? <laughs> because the starter motor in the car draws hundreds of amps of current, and uh, and it would just it would just fry them just completely. So, uh, so now theoretically, a wire theoretically a wire has no resistance, a theoretical wire. But we know, of course, that they must have resistance. That's why you use thick wires for some things and thinner for others because you need to draw more current. Let's say for the starter in a car. And and we'll see later on when we do when we take a look at conversion kits and how to hook up uh, games that uh, to carry the five volts. Uh, from the power supply to the logic board, you want to use several wires. You want to use three or four wires because they'll have less resistance that way and it will enable the electric current to flow much more easily. So resistance is defined as anything that opposes the flow of electric current in a circuit. And resistance is measured in ohms. O-H-M. One ohm, two or more ohms. In this case, uh, named after a guy named George Simon Ohm. And I don't know what he did either. <laughs> but uh, this is another one of these dead guy terms. I guess eventually we'll have the Elvis, but I'm not sure what that's going to be. So uh, anyway, so uh, and resistance is the other, another thing that we'll measure with the meter. We have a symbol that we use for ohms, and that is this symbol right here. It's the Greek letter omega. The little Greek letter omega. See the little Greek letter omega there on your meter? And that indicates that this is the place for ohms. This is where you set your meter for ohms. Right there. So we will measure voltage with our meter. And there's volts. This is called volts DC volts AC, which we'll, t we'll talk about the difference in just a minute here. And we will use our meter to measure volts. We will not use the meter to measure current, to measure amps at all. We're never going to use that amp setting, even though it's there and we could do it, we're not going to ever do it. And then this is where the meter would be set for ohms. Fail miserably. Let's go back to that, uh, let's go back to this circuit that we looked at previously with the battery and the lamp, this complete circuit. And remember I said that electric current flows from positive to negative. In this circuit, our source of power, our source is DC. It is direct current, yeah. The definition of direct current is current that flows only in one direction, only from positive to negative. A battery is a pure source of direct current. In the battery, the electric current flows only in one direction. It comes out this red lead through the red wire, through the lamp, back down. The return path is through the black lead, back to the battery again, only in one direction direct current. Let's replace the DC source with an AC source. And an AC source would generally just be indicated with a circle and this little squiggle in the middle like this. And we're going to talk a lot more about this little squiggle. This little squiggle means alternating current. It happens to be <clears throat> called a sine wave, but I'll, I'll tell you more about that later on, so don't worry about it for now. But this would be alternating current, or AC. <clears throat> and the difference between AC and DC is that alternating current is constantly changing direction. Alternating current goes in one direction for a short time, and then it goes back in the other direction. Alternating current is constantly changing direction. It's constantly changing polarity. First it goes this way, and in this case our AC power coming out of the wall is 60 cycles per second. So it goes this way for 120th of a second, then it goes back for 120th of a second. That's one cycle. We'll talk a lot about this later on. It goes this way for a short time, 
it's 120th of a second, and then it comes back again. So the difference between DC and AC is that DC, the current flows only in one direction. In AC, <clears throat> first that side's positive and that side's negative, and the current flows this way. Then the polarity reverses, 